2016 Indian Scout 61st Ride Review Personally, I feel like 5 speeds is plenty for a cruiser, really. Who wants to be shifting extra gears when they are cruising relaxationally along feeling all Lee Marvin, having their chassis further complemented by stout forks and shocks like the press material for the new buck says? Why, thank you, forks and shocks, you're not so bad yourself. The other key difference from the original Indian Scout, MO's 2015 Motorcycle of the Year, is a simple sleeving down of the bike's excellent liquid-cooled 60-degree V-twin, from 1133cc to 999cc, 69 to 61 cubic inches. That was accomplished with 6mm slimmer bores, down from 99 to 93mm diameter. Stroke remains 73.6mm, meaning this is still an oversquare twin that doesn't mind using its four valve DOHC heads to rev smack into the 8200 RPM limiter now and then if you so desire. Compression ratio for the smaller engine is a bit higher, up to 11, one from the 10.7, one of the 1133cc version. Indian claims 100 HP for the big scout, which translated to 83 at the rear wheel on the MotoGP Works Dino last September. For the 60, they say 78 horses, which should put it at about 65 Dynajet horses using the same correction factor but it feels like more. Indian claimed 72 lbft of torque for the bigger engine, which was 62.5 on our dyno at 5,800 revolutions per minute. For the 60, Indian says 65 lbft at the same 5,800 revolutions per minute. The other important number is weight, at 542 pounds dry, Indian says the 60 is 4 pounds heftier than the Big Scout, which wound up registering 562 pounds fully fueled, with Sadly, only 3.3 gallons of gas, on the official MO scales. But the most important number attached to the Scout 60 is its price tag, it can be very much less expensive to build than the original Scout, seeing as they're almost identical, but Indian wants nearly 20% less dollars for the $68,999 for the black version, $300 more for red or white. About the only way to tell the 60 from the Scout is that the large Scout has polished cam and engine covers and wheels, and a brown leather seat, and I think there is a small 60 badge in the V of the motor on the left side of the 60. I'll go out on a thick limb and guess Indian badly wanted a bike to compete with another American manufacturer's least expensive biggish cruiser, your HD Sportster Iron 883 Sols for $8,849. As for the riding experience, like I started off saying, I think I actually prefer the 60s 5 speed, which requires 18% less shifting. Why does a cruiser need as many speeds as a MotoGP bike? The clutch is light at the lever but feels plenty stout for hard launches. Final drive gearing is the same for the 60 and the Big Scout, but the 60 doesn't feel like its first is too tall nor its top gear too short. 80 miles per hour and top has the tachometer reading 4200 revolutions per minute just past halfway to redline. At that speed the bike runs really smoothly with just a hint of V-twin rumble coming through the grips and pegs, in fact it runs really smooth everywhere, including at idle. It does start to vibrate past about an indicated 95 miles per hour, which matters barely at all since you'll never go that fast. Much. The 60 has plenty of power to easily push the speedo well past 100 miles per hour but I ran out of road past about 105 indicated. It'll also burble around town dropping as low as about 40 miles per hour and 2000 revolutions per minute in fifth before you need to drop it down a gear. It uses the same 60 mm throttle body as the bigger Scout. There's sometimes the slightest hesitation when rolling back into the gas from trailing throttle, but not enough to complain about unless it's your job to complain. Everywhere else, fueling seems perfectly fine, and never a pop or backfire on Dessel either. All very civilized, yet at the same time the 60 feels pretty spunky when you give it a big handful. In fact, it doesn't seem that much slower than the big scout to me, probably because like with all smaller bikes, you work it harder, don't you? Maybe the cruiser guys don't like that. But I do. The ride itself is indistinguishable from the big scout, which makes sense since we're told they have the exact same specs and suspension. It's all gravy on smooth pavement and over small bumps, 
but big ones connect with your tailbone to remind you it's those rear shocks where Indian economized. By cruiser standards, not so bad really, it's the nature of the forward foot pegs beast. There's supposed to be three inches of rear wheel travel out back, which makes perfect sense because there will be air between your butt and the seat over any bump taller than three inches. For 2016, all the scouts shocks get softer top out bumpers, which should reduce the velocity of your butt leaving the seat.